Hello, and thank you again uh, for joining us today. Apologies for the technical uh, difficulties, but we will be beginning uh, from fresh. Uh, so I'm Taylor Combalusier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities, Inc. Today's webinar features Torque Resources. Torque is a copper and gold explorer that is earning into a portfolio of early stage porphyry, IOCG projects, and epithermal projects in Chile. Chile is the world's most prolific copper producer and features numerous world-class copper mines operated by majors. Torque offers blue sky discovery potential at its three key assets, the Santa Cecilia Gold Copper Project, the Margarita IOCG Project, and the Andre Andrea Copper Porphyry Project. The company is currently drilling at Santa Cecilia Project in the Maracunga Belt, where it intersected 557 meters at 0.38 grams per ton gold, 0.23% copper, and 56 ppm molybdenum in its inaugural drill program. Today, I have with me on the webinar, Sean Wallace, who's the Chief Executive Officer and Chair, as well as Michael Henriksen, who's the Chief Geological Officer at Torque Resources. The format of today's webinar will be comprised of two parts. In the first, uh, Sean and Michael will provide an update on Torque, and then in the second, part of the webinar, we will take your questions live. So please submit your questions at any point throughout today's presentation, and we'll get to them at the end. So to start, I'll handle the disclosures, and then we'll get into it. So for Torque Resources, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Torque corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for Torque Resources specific disclosures. So with that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Sean and Michael to update you on the company and what you have to look forward to. Well, thanks, Taylor. Um, hopefully the second time's a charm. <clears throat> thanks everybody for taking the time today to hear an update or the presentation about uh, Torque Resources, a junior exploration company uh, active in Chile. Um, as Taylor mentioned, you know, uh, Chile is one of the most prolific copper and gold mining countries in the world. Um, yeah, all the major mining companies or who are anybody are active there, successfully mining, making money. It's one of the things that drew us to it. Uh, we're a junior exploration company, so we're not here to build a mine. We're here to find a mine, sell the mine to, uh, to, uh, to, to a suitor. And uh, our, our, our assets are, are well positioned to do just that. Um, Taylor's already done the disclaimer, so I'll move on from there. Now, the Santa Cecilia project is a project that would, if successful, would be very meaningful to a major mining company. And we're already in a belt where major mining companies are active, Maracunga Belt. And right beside us, you've got the Norte Ebrierto joint venture, which is Newmont and Barrick. We've got millions of ounces of gold, billions of pounds of copper, and we've got a beautiful piece of land sort of nestled right in the sort of middle of all that ground that are as part of that joint venture. So we're well situated. We've got the right address, the right uh, neighbors, and uh, as you mentioned, we're currently drilling. Margarita project, a little bit down lower. It's on the coastal Cordillera belt, um, you know, near infrastructure, uh, but it's an IOCG type target, um, but we joke, uh, and you'll find out why when Mike tells you a little bit about the story, an IOGC, it's got a really excellent gold component, which is not typical for these type of deposits. Um, we were as surprised as anybody else when we, we got our assays back on our, our first, uh, on our discovery hole, um, but it was a pleasing uh, surprise, uh, to say the least. Um, this is the sort of project that we can see probably the scale and size would be the type of asset that would be acquired by a mid-tier company. But finally, the Andrea project, which we aren't going to speak of too extensively today, um, which is we still haven't put that first drill hold and it made the discovery. We've done the ground true thing and we are excited to drill it. Um, but given the state of capital markets and uh, the, you know how dear capital is these days, um, we've decided to defer any work on Andrea for the time being and focus on our two uh, primary projects. A little bit about the uh, capitalization and the structure of the company. We got about 134 million shares outstanding, 186 fully diluted. Um, we completed a $5.3 million financing in January. Um, we've been drilling, uh, so we will have to raise more capital again this year. There's no doubt about that, and we're uh, exploring uh, creative ways to do that so we can keep dilution to a minimal whilst moving our projects forward and continuing to create value. Uh, of note on our share 
uh, register. We have Goldfields as a partner. Um, they, they approached us uh, very soon after we acquired the project. They're very keenly interested. It was a, a project that had been on their radar for a while. Um, and uh, we were fortunate enough to be the ones to acquire it. Um, Goldfields came in and we were trading at about 60 cents at the time and bought a 15, put $15 million initially at a dollar, uh, no warrant. And, uh, you know, of course, they paid a premium and, and uh, did not get a warrant. Therefore, they needed to get something for doing that. Uh, and they got the right to maintain their 15% ownership in the company and subsequent dilutionary events, which they uh, we've tested that that um, that premise uh, of the agreement, and uh, they participated again in the most recent financing. So uh, they've been a fantastic partner and a good shareholder to have on the register. Um, a little bit about our team. I, I am Sean Wallace. I've been doing this for about 35 years. Worked on a lot of these big gold copper porphyry projects with the Hunter Dickinson Group, including Mount Milligan, Kamaz, Pebble. You know, these are well-known stories. Uh, a lot of them became mines. So it's a lot of fun. So it's, it's, it's really great to be back doing it again. Um, but, the, you know, the real superstars on our team are our Chilean team, uh, led by Michael Henriksen, who, who is also on the call. So I'm going to hand uh, the mic over to Mike right now and let him talk about the team and give a little update on what's happening uh, on the ground in Chile. Yeah, thanks, Sean. I mean, Waldo Quadra and his team uh, have had great success exploring in Chile. They were a big part of finding uh, the El Moro deposit, which is now held by Tech and Newmont and the Nueve Union joint venture. We're also a big part of finding Westwall, uh, which is now held by Anglo and Glencore. And, you know, this portfolio is their brainchild. They had their eyes on these assets for 15 years. And, you know, they've gone through hundreds and hundreds of assets in Chile. And these were the three that they really concentrated on. And I think given the discovery that we've made at uh, Margarita and of course the the nature of Santa Cecilia just goes to show you the quality uh, of their project selection. Not only that, but they take care of everything, you know, from permitting to community relations, everything's done at an extremely professional level. And so we're just in, you know, great shape down there with, with Waldo and his team. Let's go to Santa Cecilia now. Santa Cecilia, you can see his, uh, in, the, in the picture on the right, the claims are in yellow, and you can see we're surrounded by the sea of green claims, which is the Norte Abierto joint venture held by Newmont and Barrick. The two primary assets within that joint venture are the Caspiche deposit, which is part of the same mineralizing system that is on Santa Cecilia, and the Cerro Casale uh, deposit, which is about 13 kilometers to the south. Combined, those two deposits have 50 million ounces of gold and approximately 14 billion pounds of copper. Now, what's kind of sets us apart in this sort of scenario is how little work's being done on Santa Cecilia. I call it the time machine. Ultimately, we get to go back in time till the 1990s. And there's a backstory here that needs to be told. There's a famous Chilean mining entrepreneur uh, who in the mid 80s started staking ground in Northern Chile. And he staked some fantastic pieces of ground. Pasqua of Pasqua Lama, El Indio, Refugio, just to the north of us, or the Maracunga mine as it's known, uh, as long as well as Westwall. And he also had Santa Cecilia, and he sort of kept Santa Cecilia as this asset that he hasn't really done much with. Now, Anglo came in in the late 80s and had the first look at it, I believe from 1988 to 1990, found some oxide gold nice little deposit on top of the of the hill uh, and put in some exploration drifts and also found some high grade gold veins. And they were the first to push the road into this part of the world. So at that time, it was remote. Gold prices were low and they said, OK, you know, we're going to go pursue other things. Now, the owner of the project then just put it on ice for 22 years. And in 2012, he got active again with a couple of deep drill holes. But what happened in that 22 years is, of course, the poor free story of the Maracunga came to play. Caspiche was found. Cerro Casale had been found. And he started to wonder, do I have a porphyry underneath this oxide gold that Anglo had found? Drills a hole, 925 meters of about 0.45 copper equipped. So the answer was yes. And then, of course, he sat on it again until Torque showed up and that's where we come in. So really, we get to go back in time. We know there's porphyry mineralization on it. We know there's numerous porphyry targets. We, we're right next to 25 million ounces uh, at Caspiche. And so it's just a very unique opportunity in that way. 
Now, when you look at it, because we were in that time machine, we had to go back to first principles. And, you know, that included soil surveys, getting the geophysical data in shape, really understanding the geology. And what we found is, um, you know, apart from where you see this red uh, polygon, where the oxide gold was found by Anglo, we started to find a bunch of porphyries. Uh, and those are the targets in blue, Pyrrhus Norte, Hemelus Norte, Philo Hemelus. Those are outcropping mineralized porphyry bodies within about a kilometer to two kilometers of Caspice. So that's a fantastic start. You know, just to have these undrilled porphyries is a is an amazing opportunity, really. And currently, we're we've got the drill uh, into Pyrrhus Norte right now. Now, if you go back and and we take a look at what we did in our first couple of drill holes, we went to where Anglo had done some drilling and some of the deeper drilling had occurred, and we put in a couple of holes, and that's where we got this 557 meters of 0.38 gold, 0.23 copper, and 56 parts per million molybdenum. And that was a significant increase in the gold grade from what had been drilled historically, which was about uh, you know an 80% increase. So that's a very good indication that we're getting to toward the causative intrusion that really makes it all happen. Now, if you look at Caspice, what is it? Okay, 25 million ounces. It's 1.2 billion tons at about 0.55 gold and 0.23 copper. So you can see we're getting very close to that sort of overall look uh, in terms of grade to Caspice. But within Caspice, there's a high grade core that runs pretty much a gram per ton and 0.4 copper. And that's ultimately what we're targeting in our drilling. Now, just to give you, you know, a take, you know, it's good to have an image, you know, what are we actually dealing with? Well, you can see Caspice on the left in the back with the yellow star. You can see all these untested targets in the same valley. You can see why it's so compelling. You know, I used to work for Newmont. It was all around the world for them. And I'm actually taking this photo from that second drill hole that we drilled 557 meters of 0.38 gold and 0.23 copper looking east. And you can see the undrilled targets. You can see Caspice in the background and you can really see the operational synergy that could happen in the event that we find, you know, a good high grade porphyry system. That all of a sudden might unlock the Norte Abierto joint venture, which was one of the real appeals to us as we embarked on these programs. So, you know, again, just good to see how simple this is in terms of topography. I would point out that, you know, Cerro Casale is 13 kilometers away from us over some, you know, pretty big mountain ranges and topography. And so the operational synergies may be limited, but here, if we can find, you know, a good high grade porphyry in this valley, it's clear what, yeah, you know, can be done. Now, just to take you back to that original drilling, um, the 2012 drilling from the underlying owner, you know, this these were the first drill holes to target porphyries. And, and you know, here you have a, a 925 meter intercept of 0.21 gold and 0.27 copper and roughly 80 parts per million molybdenum. That's when we came in. And you can see that, you know, those holes were drilled north south. What we did is we said, okay, what's the orientation of the high grade core at Caspice? Do we see similar structures? And the answer was yes. You know, we drilled across these northeast trending structures because if you look at Caspice, more or less north-south trending high grade core. And we said, let's go across that. Drilled the first uh, hole into it and it basically obtained similar results. The rocks looked better. We saw porphyries uh, that we hadn't seen in the historical drilling. That was all wall rock mineralization. And then in the second hole, we stepped 700 meters to the south. And that's where we saw the increase in grade, saw a change in alteration and said to ourselves, okay, we must be getting close to that high grade causative intrusion. And we believe it's open to the south and also to the east. So, you know, we, we we're extremely pleased with our second hole into, into this target called Cerro del Medio. And we know that we're on the right track because we have an increase in grade. And of course we see the right type of alteration. And to show you that uh, the series of drill holes in, in a cross section, on the far right, this is the historical drill hole sort of blanked out or faded out a little bit. Here's our first drill hole coming into it, similar grades. Uh, and then you can see our third. Now the red histogram on these drill traces is gold. The blue histogram is copper. And if you just compare the gold histogram here on, the, on, our, on our second hole, it is of completely different nature. It's consistently high grade. 
uh, down the entire length of the intercept in comparison to the other two holes. And I think that's really important to demonstrate that yes, you can increase the grade here. And we're really just starting with that. Now, if you look at it as a direct comparison to Caspice, which you see here on the left from a cross section that we took directly out of a 43101 uh, from Exeter Resources from 2009, you can see the causative high grade intrusion here. You know, this is uh, roughly 100, 150 meters wide. Um, it's in pink. If you drill that causative intrusion, some beautiful things happen. 1,200 meters of 0.9 gold, 0.33 copper. 1,058 meters of 0.7 gold, 0.35 copper here. Now, if you step 100 meters away from that and just drill slightly away from the causative intrusion, it's 590 meters of 0.44 gold, 0.25 copper. And I would argue that we drilled exactly that in our second drill hole uh, into Cerro del Medio. And so, of course, you, you see this cartoon here with a, with a question mark. Is that the causative intrusion? Are we just a few hundred meters away? And, you know, ultimately, I think that we are. Um, so that's just a, a show of how the grade distribution looks at Caspice, how it linearly sort of decreases as you go away from the causative intrusion. And fortunately for us, it seems to be linearly increasing as we go to the south. And so, of course, you know, there is more drilling to be done here to get into those great intercepts that you can see uh, that Caspice provides. And we know that the mineralized system is the same. Now, another thing to point out to everybody is that it's open towards surface. At the top of this hill where it says looking northeast, you've got your oxide gold that Anglo drilled back in the day. Um, from 88 to 1990. And, and what you see here in purple and these sort of pink colors, these are porphyry dikes. Now, one important consideration is beyond the fact that we can chase it up towards the surface is there is a distinct change uh, in alteration. And I'm not gonna get into the you know full-blown technical analysis here, but what we see uh, sort of midway through the intercept is a sericide overprint on potassic alteration. And it's something similar that you see at Caspice, in fact. So we're seeing the same geological conditions, an increase in grade. And obviously for us, that's just telling us you're vectoring in the right direction. Keep going to get that causative intrusion. Now, Santa Cecilia, what are we currently doing? Well, you can see here in a couple of photos, uh, on the left, Caspice sits in the back. There's this long uh, sort of shallow, shallow slope here. It's primarily covered by colluvium where you do see outcrops. There's mineralized porphyries and it's running sort of 0.2 to 0.8 grams per ton and up to 0.4 gold in sheeted veinlets. Um, and it had never been drill tested. And so for us, you know, we, we clearly saw the mineralization. We knew it was a porphyry. We said, okay, let's get a couple of drill holes into this thing and see what's going to come out of it. Uh, obviously, we're in the midst of that, and we look forward to getting the results there, out of there when the drill program uh, completes, but that's just a Exploration 101 must be drilled. On the right-hand side, you see Caspice, Slight Valley, and up into Himelos Norte. And at Himelos Norte, again, sheeted veinlets, mineralized porphyries, not a drill hole in sight. And the valley that separates Caspice uh, and Himelos is a diatreme body that cuts the mineralization off on the western side of Caspice. As you come up out of that valley, back into mineralization. And we always say to ourselves, is this the mirror image to Caspice just across the valley? So, you know, we've put one hole into that. Again, looking forward to getting the results out, but just shows you how raw of an exploration story this is. Uh, and, you know, to have those multiple uh, porphyry centers available for discovery on top of you know the increased grade that we showed on our first couple of drill holes is just a, a fantastic scenario from an exploration standpoint. This moves us on to Margarita. Uh, Margarita was our country entry. It's located down in the coastal Cordillera. We're about 65 kilometers north of the city of Copiapo, one of the great mining centers uh, in Chile. We're just to the south of Capstone's Manto Verde mine and their Santo Domingo development project. And of course, we're to the north of uh, Lundin's Candelaria mine. We've made a brand new greenfields discovery here. It really never been drilled. And all of a sudden, you know, we've got some, some pretty robust mineralization. I believe our very first uh, discovery hole was 90 meters of uh, just shy of a, a gram per ton gold and, and, and 0.9 copper. Now, great start. I'll take you through that discovery. We see not only a, a strong uh, 
copper gold story in terms of sulfide mineralization, but we've also gotten into a copper oxide story and a discovery in copper oxide. So we've kind of got two discoveries that have been made here. And, and obviously I'll take you through that. But again, uh, fantastic to be making a, a discovery uh, from first principles. A slightly complicated scenario here, uh, but let's let's make it simple. Uh, in the bottom left-hand corner here, you see this thing called the Margarita Structural Corridor. This was known when we got to the project. There had been some light drilling, 50 to 100 meter deep holes, uh, looking for copper oxide mineralization in the 1990s here. And, and we knew that. And Waldo and his team had always felt that there should be a sulfide source for this. So in our first drill campaign, we put 13 holes in, and you can see some of the collars here in the southwest end as we tried to find the, the, the sulfide source to this uh, copper oxide mineralization. Didn't see it down here. Uh, fortuitously for us, uh, we came up uh, to the north into a place called Phi 13, and we made this uh, great discovery. You know, 90 meters of 0.84 gold, 0.94% copper, very near surface. Put a second drill hole into it, 98 meters of 0.94 gold, 0.68 copper. That was fantastic. And in that second phase of drilling, we put about 12, 13 holes into this area. We created an 800 meter long continuous mineralized body, showed that you could have consistent mineralization in a zone, showed that it could de deliver effectively. Now, what we learned from that drilling was two crucial things. First off, the gold content for an IOCG was unique in that it was very high. So if you drill a gram per ton gold, you're drilling a percent copper. If you're drilling 0.5 grams gold, you're drilling half a percent copper. And that relationship is, is very consistent within that 800 meter long body. The other thing that we learned is that copper uh, is leached in the top 30 meters from surface. And so, you know, we had been targeting copper in our, in our soil geochemistry, looking for it on surface as we were mapping, and that ultimately brought us to the discovery. But when we really saw that it was truly leached from the surface, we had to go back to gold geochemistry. And that's all the red polygons now. These are, these are gold geochemical anomalies that we use as a proxy for copper gold. So what did we do in our third phase of drilling? We said, okay, look, we've got this nice 800 meter long body. Where does it go? What happens to it? You can see that we've got a strong north northwest structural trend. There's these cross structures. So, you know, what do we do? We drill out to the east, out to the west, and out to the north. And what happened was, is we found, you know, mineralization 200 meters away, and we drilled, you know, 42 meters of 1.1 gram gold and 0.48% copper along this cross structure. That's open for over a kilometer as far as we can tell right now, in terms of geophysics, in terms of mapping, and we know that we can make this a much bigger scenario. At the same time, we said, okay, well, let's go test some of these other geochemical targets. We went down to Remolino, it was highly anomalous, didn't get sort of, you know, those economic grades that we were looking for. And then we went down to Cota Tuta. The Cota Tuta provided us a great discovery in that we drilled 132 meters of 0.48% copper oxide just underneath the surface. And we went, wait a second, this copper oxide story must be uh, much bigger than we gave it credit for at the start. And so we, if you look at this project sort of in a northern half, you know, obviously we've got a, a, a copper gold sulfide system up here that's growing. And down here we have this emerging copper oxide story. So let's go back to the, to the scenario of the initial discovery. You can see what we've done. There's your 800 meter long body. We've got the cross structures. We've drilled this hole out to the west on this one. We're gonna follow that up. The fourth round of drilling to our minds is going to make this a much bigger scenario. And I think that's really crucial. We're gonna to start to show that scale that's gonna attract mid tiers. You know, people who are in operating in this belt, we're kind of getting to that critical scale uh, in terms of a look that it's going to be of interest to them. As you continue and you look at that, that drill hole in the new structure that we've hit, you know, the 42 meters of 1.1 grams gold and 0.48 copper 200 meters away from our, from our uh, initial discovery, there's a couple of things that's really important. First off, the bulk of the mineralization 
in our initial discovery is that the contact here, this Manto target, and you can see the contact flat lying between pink intrusions and, and green overlying volcanics. And that's where our 800 meters of mineralization basically hung out. But here we found what we believe to be a potential feeder. It's about 150 meters underneath that target. We can chase it up towards surface. We know that this is a very favorable horizon within the entire uh, property package. And again, you know, we start to look to build size and tons. You know, obviously we've got some great grades here. Now we've just got to, you know, with a, with a fourth phase of drilling, demonstrate that it continues to get bigger. What I'll do now is I'll take you down to the south to the Cota Tuta copper oxide discovery. And again, you see the same flat line contact. In this case, the intrusion is, is blue. Uh, the overlying volcanics are green. Where does the mineralization hang out? Right at the contact. And honestly, you know, for me personally, when I stood on top of Cota Tuta, and if you had asked me, hey, you know, you're going to get a good intercept out of this and a copper oxide just underneath the, where you're standing, probably would have said, eh, you know, probably not. But again, that that horizon is just so preferential for mineralization uh, that it, it delivered to us. And we have about 800 meters of strike length to the north that we can chase this. So I think, again, we're showing scale, we're showing different exploration opportunities and, and really two discoveries that we're currently on right now. So key takeaways from Margarita, obviously we wanna get a fourth phase of drilling into this thing. Our objective is to make this attractive for a mid-tier. We want to show scope to a couple hundred million tons, um, you know, near surface uh, deposits and be attractive for a, a mid-tier mining company. And, you know, we're currently planning a, a fourth phase of drilling that will show that scale. Uh, and from there, um, you know, we're obviously going to be in, in good condition. So finally, um, Currently drilling at Santa Cecilia, we've got ourselves, uh, we're going to be wrapping up our program here within the next couple of weeks, results coming out uh, within six to eight weeks from now, and then finally uh, planning out our Margarita phase four drill program to, to give it the scale uh, that it deserves. And Sean, I'll, I'll leave it to you for closing remarks. Sure. <clears throat> okay. Well, thanks, Michael. Um, you know, we're really happy at Torque with the way things have been going on our projects. As you can see, we've managed to to find a bunch of uh, have success each time we went out with our drill bed. Um, you know, the markets are challenging right now. It's it's a challenging time to, to to finance these opportunities. So you probably noticed that we've gone with smaller financings more frequently than one would typically do. That's to try to minimize and mitigate the whole dilutionary effect. We're very positive about the future for the company and the things that we've got in front of us. And uh, we're open to answer any questions now, if anyone has any. Perfect. Thank you very much, Sean and Michael. Great presentation. Uh, so with that, we will turn to questions uh, for the webinar. Uh, just a reminder that everybody on the line can submit your questions at any time using the chat. Uh, that said, we do have some that have come in already. Uh, first up here, we have uh, Newmont and Barrick all surround Santa Cecilia. How did Newmont and Barrick miss uh, that opportunity? Well, I don't think it necessarily they missed it. I wasn't available to them. Um, the underlying owner of this particular asset was quite picky about uh, uh, with whom he did the deal. As I mentioned at, on the onset, Goldfields also coveted this this asset, uh, and they when they knew it was available, but it wasn't. It was held by a very wealthy, very successful Chilean mining entrepreneur who could sort of, and he had a preference to do um, a deal with a junior because. You know, when a when a exploration project goes into the majors uh, bucket, sometimes it doesn't get the attention it deserves. But for us, it's our lifeblood. We have to work the project. We have to put the meters in. That's what we do. And uh, so he had a preference with a junior. Uh, and as Michael pointed out, it was our uh, connecting to Waldo Quadra and his team, who were obviously embedded in Chilean culture, very influential people, and they were the ones who provided us the opportunity to to, to have Santa Cecilia. Great. Okay. And then uh, maybe just picking up on, on a, a, something you mentioned there, just uh, could you elaborate on the, the relationship with Goldfields and is their main interest Santa Cecilia? It is their primary interest. Though so I believe, you know, when we first started to develop our relationship, Margarita had, didn't have a drill hole in it. So since then, it has become more interesting to them, I would say. But however, if Santa Cecilia weren't there, 
I'm not sure they would be. Um, but, you know, obviously Margarita, um, they, they would never bring it up in our discourse previously, but now it's like, hey, well, what's happening at that Margarita? Because it, it was a surprise for virtually everybody. Right, right. Okay. Um, and then on, on the strategy front, uh, you did mention uh, not doing work on Andrea, given the, the markets right now. Um, going forward, I guess, how, you know, obviously you are drilling at Santa Cecilia, but how do you kind of envision the split? Uh, between Santa Cecilia and Margarita uh, going forward? Yeah, well, I'm, you know, there's a few factors that can help determine that. One, you know, seasonality. Uh, another would be uh, earn in obligations. Um, so, you know, we have an $8 million worth of, uh, of uh, drilling that we have to complete by October 2025 on Santa Cecilia from here. So that much will be going there. Uh, Margarita presently has. Uh, fulfilled all its work commitments. We only have property payments to the underlying owners there. So we don't have any pressure to, to, to do any scale of particular scale of work. We can, we can scale it as, you know, again, taking in that what's the benefit to our shareholders versus the dilution, you know, we, we don't have to run out and dilute to do Margarita this minute. Uh, and, you know, it feels like the market's getting a little bit better and then we might be able to be, to get more accretive uh, financings and we can seek alternative sort of forms of financing, which, you know, we're looking at every, uh, every type of mechanism and opportunity we can to, to try and keep the dilution down and the value creation opportunity whole. Right. Okay. Um, and you, you mentioned in the presentation or Michael did anyway, um, about uh, looking for a, a follow-up drill pro tro program at Margarita would be the, the logical next step. Um, are you also uh, planning to do uh, metallurgical test work there on the oxide zones? Is that still uh, envisioned in the near term? Uh, Michael? I think, yeah. I mean, look, I think that, you know, obviously we will do some med testing here. What we need to do first, though, is get some meters into it and show sc scale. That's that's the number one thing that we need to do. We have to get scale into the thing, demonstrate that we've got something that's going to be of interest to a mid tier. Get an initial med test done, demonstrate that it'll you know that it'll leach, and then off to the races. But scale first. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, and then you know maybe Sean, a, a question for you or Michael as well. Just wondering, I guess coming out of uh, conference season with uh, PDAC earlier this month. Um, what's your kind of outlook uh, for the market on the, the for juniors kind of uh, going forward here? Uh, improvement uh, on the horizon there. Well, it's it. Um, you know, we I would characterize the last couple of years as being mostly dreadful with a few windows or flashes of bright spots and uh, people that were positioned to capitalize on those managed to, to get some capital in. But I, but I think I would say overall, and most people aren't going to like to hear this, but uh, when I talk among my contemporaries, other people running junior companies, it's still pretty dreadful out there, uh, you know, compared to even just a neutral market. So, you know, capital is still very risk adverse, it feels. Um, but there have been a few companies in the last couple of weeks uh, during PDAC, you felt like there was a bit of shift. Um, but I always try to temper uh, what I take from that because the people there are very motivated to try and see that glass half full. And sometimes realism is lost in the uh, in the translation of that. Um, you know, I, however, look at the metal prices. We can't, there's no denying that gold's behaving better. Copper's, so the metals don't owe us anything in terms of a catalyst to, uh, to, to, to better times. I think we just have to have some folks make some money somewhere and then uh, they start, you know, they hive off a bit of it for the risk capital and that's when the juniors come to life. So, you know, I think that's what you need to look out for here going forward is to have some, see some people making money in the space and the capital tends to get recycled as we've all seen many times in the past. Right. Okay. Um, we do have a follow-up question, I guess, on the, just wondering about uh, Newmont and Barrick around Santa Cecilia. Um, just uh, having the grade so far uh, from your drill program, uh, did Barrick or Newmont approach you uh, or maybe look at financing from them or a JV? Not sure if there's um, any comments you can make on that front, but... Yeah, I think they've got their hands full with what they're doing. I, I, I mean, I don't mean presume to speak for them. Uh, we haven't had extensive discussions with them at all. Um, but, you know, it it appears that they're taking a wait, see, see what we can come up with there. And then, 
you know, see, let us get a little bit further down the track. Because when you really look at Santa Cecilia, we have, we're not real, we've got two drill holes that we inherited. And, you know, now we'll have five that we drilled ourselves on a pretty massive project with several targets. So I, I think it's safe to characterize Santa Cecilia as a, we've only scratched the surface on that particular opportunity. There's a lot more meters that go in before we'll even have a sense of what's, what's there. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll, I don't see any other questions uh, that have come in, but I'll, I'll put out a final call for questions and, you know, maybe uh, give you the, the final word if there's any last pitch you have for investors or final thoughts. Okay, I'm not I'm not seeing any. So maybe, uh, Sean, if you have any final thoughts, you can go ahead. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, we've got a fantastic assets. Uh, the, 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 they present a great opportunity to, uh, to, to have the kind of assets that a junior only dreams of uh, and to be able to have one that's tailor made or uh, is, is by virtue of its nature, perfect for a major mining company and one that's perfect for the mid tier. So it's great. The audience. Uh, you know, because that's the exit strategy for for us, and that's where our shareholders should be clear about what we're trying to do here. We're not going to build mines. We're going to find something and try and sell it at a premium. Um, that's what junior miners should stick to doing, in, in my estimation, in any event. And I think for investors, this horrid market for people who have the capital, the risk capital, and patience. Um, will most certainly be rewarded. I mean, I've done this for 35 years and it's in these moments where you get beside yourself and you can't understand why things aren't doing better, that they will. Ultimately, they will turn. Um, I'm not about to sit here and give you any timing on that because I just certainly don't have a sense of it. Is it always comes around. So people that are brave enough and have the capital to, to and the patience, are, these are where the best rewards come from. Perfect. Okay. Um, that's how we did have one final question come in. Just uh, somebody wondering how many meters do you think will need to be drilled at uh, Santa Cecilia to know what you have there? If you have any rough idea. Yeah. I mean, look, at, at the end of the day, it's just, it's just a, it's a, it's a major style project with no drilling, right? Effectively. So what I would say here is, you know, I think you need to put at least 15,000 more meters into this uh in all of the targets that we have to really have a an understanding of where the discovery is going to be the true high grade discovery and from there um you know we're going to find out uh so our job is to get those meters into ground we know that's a, a productive porphyry system uh it's just going to be a matter of, of of where it's going to be at the end of the day right perfect Okay, uh, I think we are all out of questions now, so we'll, we'll wrap up. I would like to thank uh, Sean and Michael from Torque Resources for taking the time today uh, to host the webinar with Red Cloud Securities, and thank you to everybody on the line for tuning in with us.